Over the last decade or so, we've had significant improvements in transplantation practices, and many patients are becoming long-term survivors with AML after allogeneic stem cell transplant. What we did was we looked at a cohort of 9,000 patients from several different countries, and we're trying to find out what are the long-term outcomes of these patients and what are the predictors of the long-term outcomes, as well as what is their relative mortality compared to a general matched population by age, sex, and country. What we found was for those who had AML, got an allogeneic transplant, and were alive and relapse free at two years post transplant, had an excellent 10 year overall survival at 76.2%. So, again, we're only including those who were alive and relapse free at two years post transplant. Uh, we found that. RIC conditioning regimens actually uh, was associated with worse leukemia-free survival and overall survival for our analysis. And the most interesting part of our analysis is we showed that the probability of death in these transplant survivors remained significantly high at 10 years post-transplant compared to a matched population. Uh, so, so what this really highlighted was that we need to improve our efforts in understanding and determining the late causes of deaths in these patients. You know, over the last several years, we've come with new strategies that weren't included in our analysis. So things like haploidentical transplants using post-transplant cyclophosphamide has really improved grass versus host disease outcomes and things like that. So the optimization of transplant has has significantly improved recently. And what we're trying to do now is really try to figure out a way to screen these patients long-term and keep them in long-term follow-up to look for some of these late causes of death.